Most conspiracy theories, especially the crazier ones, are meant to discredit the real ones. One hour of disturbing, creepy and interesting conspiracy theories. I think some memes are started by businesses as a form of free advertising. The recent Duolingo memes got me thinking more about it. Duolingo wasn't a small app at the time, but it became a lot more popular after the fact. There have been other memes revolving around a particular product or brand as well, that make me think this is happening on a strategic level beyond some kid thinking it'd be hella funny to do this or that. Marshmallow doesn't actually produce his own music. My biggest piece of evidence is the creator arcade videos, he speaks and navigates Ableton like someone with only a basic knowledge of music production. He does everything number by number, producers don't do that, you can't just instantly know that sound needs a boost of exactly 1 dB at exactly 1.2 kHz without even listening to the sound first, he randomly pauses every now and then, presumably to be fed lines. And he seems to lack even a basic understanding of music theory recreating MIDI by randomly clicking in notes with no regard for the key of the song. Someone with the level of skill he demonstrates should not be capable of making radio quality hits. Disney released Frozen, so that it would be the top result when searching Disney Frozen, and not anything about Walt Disney's head being cryogenically frozen in the Disney theme park. I don't know how likely that is, on either count actually. Area 51 is just a front that was allowed to become popular in the public eye, but actually has nothing of value. Not saying aliens in bases exist, just saying Area 51 is allowed to be the popular secret base, thing to cover up actual secrets. I am not downplaying what the airmen at 51 do, just saying that what they do now is not likely as top secret as people are led to believe. That our phones are always recording, at least audio, to target advertising of course, but more secret agent things as well. My mother-in-law talking at dinner about how hard it is to train for a marathon now that she is over the age of 55. I get ads all over Reddit and Google that read, over 50 and a runner? Check out this random product. Within 4 hours of the conversation. I know there was a bunch of stuff about this, but I think every company denied it. Could be wrong though. Marijuana legalization is being pushed by Big Pharma. Once it's legalized, they will then push for restrictive regulations in the interest of public safety that will force shutdowns of consumer or small grow operations, those are only allowed now to foster positive sentiment towards legalization. So then it's legal and they have a monopoly. Planned obsolescence, if it's still a conspiracy theory. Why does my phone suddenly develop unseen issues when the new one is released? It's not a coincidence. And who even asked for these tech companies to release a new phone every year? We live in a time where technology is now growing at a rather slower pace compared to the 2000s when there was rapid innovation. It's not like my current phone is getting crappier in one year, but wait, it is. Applies to phones, tablets, smart watches, basically most, rather expensive, internet connected devices receiving updates. There's a recent increase in realistic space colonization movies to garner interest in space exploration. Because some people at the top know it's needed. It's actually probably so very wealthy people can get funding and support from us average losers so they can abandon the planet as soon as possible, while we suffer all the crap that was most likely caused by them. People at the top don't give a crap about you and I, we can sit on the planet and pay for oxygen as we slowly die from cancer. They want to get off the planet. Male birth control advancements are being squashes by the pharma companies who produce the female contraceptive pill because of all the money the pill generates despite it causing so many unsavory side effects. Example, Vashalgal. A non-invasive treatment for men that mimic a vasectomy but is completely reversible. It's been around since 2010 but can't get funding. I think it's because it is a once of, maybe more than once depending on number of kids you want, treatment and reversal and not a daily dose, so it is not a constant income. Why fund something that won't give you a steady stream of money, even if it means a healthier society? I am not talking about the male contraceptive pill or a spermicide gel. This is, for lack of better way to explain, an IUD type thing for men, completely different to the male pill that has made mainstream media. It was developed in India and there are online sites for them to get funding through sponsors. This is my tinfoil hat theory, it's not based on meticulous research. That Avril Lavigne died in the mid 2000s and her record label hired someone who looked like her to take over her career. Michael Jordan didn't decide to step away from the NBA to play baseball to honor his dad or anything like that. 
he got caught gambling and David Stern couldn't allow the league to lose all credibility with its biggest star being suspended for betting on games. He had him take a couple years off instead of publicly punishing him. I've posted this one before, but I think that there are high-level rings of pedophiles and sexual predators specifically so that those above them can keep them under control. We know that there are kingmakers. While the big actors and musicians today are certainly talented, there are plenty of B and C listers who could be just as big if only they had the backing of a big publisher like Disney, Paramount, etc. Thing is, making a king is expensive, you have to spend a lot of time and money getting the public to care about them before they start to pay you back, and once they're big they don't technically need you anymore. So the kingmakers are naturally going to look for people who are retainable to ensure they get their investment back. They have to, for every king they make dozens of duds, it's an expensive process. Sometimes that's as simple as them being naive. A good legal contract can lock them in for a long time, and often the only way out is to destroy your value so the kingmaker stops caring, look at Britney Spears meltdown for example, but if you can't get that then blackmail works just as well. I suspect that for a long time homosexuality was the go-to black mark. That's why it seemed like for so long that the big names were always having gay scandals and the like. It was easy to stage, easy to feed them their vice of choice when they were good, and not illegal, just career suicide, so it was low risk high reward. But of course the downside to making a king is that he gets a good deal of power too and eventually public opinion shifted and it became okay to be gay. Could still destroy some careers, the teen heartthrob loses a lot of his appeal when it turns out he's more interested in his very small male fanbase, but hardly enough to keep them from going solo or jumping to another label. So now they moved on to more shocking and illegal appetites. Harder to spot vulnerable marks and tougher to get them their vice of choice, but if it was easy to make a king everybody would be doing it. Someone who abuses women or children isn't about to cross their handler, they shut up and take their cut. After all, they're still being handsomely rewarded, just not as much as they could be making if they didn't have a publisher leeching out the lion's share of their profits. I don't think this is a huge coordinated conspiracy, mind you. I think that quite a few successful talent managers have discovered that sexual predators are surprisingly easy to manage if you're willing to clean up their messes for them, and that when you're talking about tens of millions of dollars you can suddenly afford high-powered lawyers and firemen who neither ask nor answer questions. But between predators gaining power and promoting like-minded monsters, and managers seeking out predators because they're easy to keep on contract, I think it explains a bit of why there always seems to be at least a few sexual assault scandals going on in movies and music at any given time. All the UFO sightings throughout history are just humans from the future on a time-traveling safari meant to observe how we were in the past. They are supposed to keep out of sight, but because of human and mechanical errors, there have been hiccups with their cloaking which have resulted in being seen. That's why there have always been so many reports of them throughout history, but there has never been an attack. It's just us. Also the reason why we don't see as many examples of UFOs now even through pretty much everyone has a camera is because people are not that interested in this time period since we already document aspects of human life all the time. PETA is ran by the meat industry to delegitimize vegetarianism and cutting back on meat. This one is more personal but I fully believe it. Long story short, my father-in-law was good friends with a guy who was pretty high up in Boeing. Like, knew some top secret kind of stuff. Well he ended up quitting as he couldn't take the pressure. He was a very paranoid person, to the point as was a hindrance to his life. Well, a few months after he starts telling my father-in-law that he's being watched and followed and that the government is coming for him. Like I said, insanely paranoid. A few extra details that will be important, he drove a moped as his primary transportation and he was very overweight. Lo and behold, he comes up dead a month or so later. The official story is this, he was riding along when a hitchhiker waved him down. He stopped to pick him up, drove a few miles down the road to a secluded wooded area, pulled off the road, walked into the woods and shot himself. I shouldn't need to explain what's wrong here but I will anyway. I'm supposed to believe that a guy with crippling paranoia picked up some random hitchhiker and then killed himself. Even if he wasn't paranoid, it's basically impossible for him to fit a small child on his moped with him, let alone a full-grown male adult. No information was ever released about to hitchhiker. No name, no statements to the police, nothing. The Earth is a zoo created by aliens, and UFOs are visitors. In Lilo and Stitch, they said Earth was a wildlife preserve for mosquitoes. 
While the aliens refer to it as a preserve for mosquitoes, at the end of the movie we're told that it was a lie made up to protect Earth from destruction. There is intelligent life out there, it's just that we're too primitive for any prominent contact with aliens. Aliens choose to not come to Earth because we are lacking in intelligence and technology and that the conspiracy is that we know this for whatever reason but plead ignorance and suggesting there is life out there. I somewhat subscribe to this idea. Imagine if advanced alien civilizations view and treat us like we do the people of North Sentinel Island. India until recently did a yearly overflight of the island and also sends out helicopters to check up on them after major events like the tsunami but we take a very hands-off approach since the islanders are so primitive. Who's to say some advanced alien civilization that views us as quaint isn't taking the same approach and that the UFO sightings aren't basically to us what the Indian government helicopters are to the islanders. I really hope we are in a simulation. Every religion's heaven sounds like a real drag, but I don't want everything to just end. Ideally, one day I'll die, then just wake up in a room, go get a snack or something, then load up another life and go for another spin. Repeat millions or billions of times. That Princess Diana's death was orchestrated by Prince Charles. I just can't wrap my head around the idea that, this guy has an affair with Camilla and gets caught. Divorce happens and even during the divorce and after, she is doing absolutely the best like just killing it still in her duties, mom duties, the gorgeous revenge velvet dress, the entire world adores her. Then all of a sudden she dies in this car accident due to her driver? You know how many countless times she was driven by someone, someone who was trained and hired specifically for the royal family. Then Prince Charles gets married to Camilla and all is right and well again in the public eye the world gets to see. Federal law enforcement bodies are working with the public and private prison industries to flood the streets with heroin and fentanyl, because they see the impending mass legalization of marijuana, and can't risk that many empty cells. A massive uptick in street opioid use in the past few years combined with aggressive policies targeting legitimate pain patients, and cutting them off of their medications, as well as restricting doctors' abilities to treat more people with things like Suboxone. It's not big pharma. Why would they allow their most popular and abusable medications to be all but banned if they're as big and powerful as everyone thinks? It's not like they're hawking new treatment drugs, and the government is working hard to ban natural alternatives like Kratom on top of it. To me, it all points to a concentrated effort to increase drug-related offenses to keep fines and court fees rolling in and cells filled after weed is legal. Amazon tracks people who buy ring doorbells and then waits for those same people to buy another product. Then they send actors and actresses to deliver the next package. While delivering, the actors are told to do something cute or quirky, dance, smell the flowers on the porch, or pet a dog, so that the owners will hopefully see the footage and post it online to social media and give the impression that working for Amazon is actually fun and exciting. All the while getting free advertisement. Music feuds don't exist. They are created by record labels. Anybody who thinks Taylor Swift and Katy Perry were feuding are morons. It is a marketing stunt. Their record labels create these feuds to sell music. When Taylor fans think Katie does a song about her they all buy the song to see what she is saying, then buy her album to find more songs that they think are about Taylor, and the exact same thing for Katie fans. They are given generic songs to sing that people just assumed are about the other but in reality aren't about anybody. Same goes for rap feuds. A up and coming rapper feuds with a more successful rapper to gain popularity just as that more successful rapper did when they were coming up. All these feuds are just to sell more music. Stoned ape theory is fascinating. The possibility that our conscious thought and self-awareness was developed from monkeys eating mushrooms is so crazy but still plausible. Remember when you were a child and had a life-changing revelation on how the world works? Remember any one of the life revelations that brought you to where you are? All of your thought from that point forth was altered and now on a different path of thinking. Your reality became different and a clearing took place in your mind where you finally understood. An epiphany. This absolutely happens when you take a high enough dose of psilocybin. The theory is that primates discovered shrooms in the wild and it unlocked logic or analytical thinking in their brain, the one thing that most differentiates us. With this newfound logic came a biological shift over millions of years. It would make sense that the split happened sudden and remained divided since humans with logic wouldn't form social bonds with primates like that. They'd stick to their species for survival and easier hunting. That the governments of this world, and other entities mentioned in these things, are double playing the conspiracy theories and theorists, and not only through stigmas like the tinfoil hat. 
I believe that for example if there is one huge leak by one of these guys, or maybe even by someone like Snowden, not him specifically, but someone in his kind of position or at least someone that won't be instantly deemed a nut job, it's in fact a decoy. You hear about the mess ups they can afford to let you hear about, thus keeping everything in a constant state of confusion. Are they really that stupid to have that leaked? Or are they three steps ahead? You can never know, and that's the way they want you to be. There's a lot of things that go smoother than silk and nothing ever truly feels like it's changing, it's like. I believe they would have the manpower, the intelligence, and the stakes high enough to pull something like this off. The art world is largely built around money laundering and tax evasion. This explains a lot of the really simplistic art pieces that sell for millions. You pay 10k for a painting, then give it to a college three years later. During that time, it went from 10k to 50k because f you, it's art. So you tell the IRS you donated 50k this year. And you can deduct donations from your yearly revenue and thus pay less taxes. The university plays along because they get free stuff out of the deal. Basically what money laundering is is that you invest your dirty money by operating a business and reclaiming your original money via the business's profit in order to avoid taxes. This can be applied to items of value as well. Buy a $100,000 painting that is less money you would pay in taxes, then go back and sell it. K-pop was created by the South Korean government under suggestion from the IMF as an extra exportable industry to fix its balance of payments. It really happened that way. I'm more surprised people or surprised governments get involved in cultural exports. Japan had some five-year cool Japan thing going on. Thailand sending chefs to American to popularize Thai food. It's a way to win the game, cultural victory. You want tourism and people buying your stuff, so you do whatever works. The government is actually watching everything you do. Now that doesn't mean there is some dude sitting at a computer looking over your internet history. But the government does have tons of information about you on a server somewhere. The paradox is that a lot of people in the government don't know they have it, and the rest don't know what to even do with it. Not everyone dismisses it, but the US government is still experimenting on its own citizens without their actual consent, but their implied consent. Fun fact. They legally can do this to anybody in the military, and did so to a group of marines testing gas masks against mustard gas or some other chemical weapon under the guise of preparing for Iraqi chemical weapons. Now on the surface this doesn't seem so bad, it makes sense. However, the guys suffered varying degrees of damage, and the doctors who treated them were, according to a few whistleblowers, ordered to remain silent, mostly due to the fact the doctors noticed that the injuries were not those of mustard gas, but a different chemical weapon. This happened in 2002 or 2003 I think, and a handful of the men died, with many more passing away a year or two later. I wish I currently had the source I got this from, but it's long since disappeared. Michael Jordan's first retirement was an unofficial suspension for betting on basketball. Not to forget the other part of the theory, that James Jordan was murdered due to his son's gambling debts. Not saying I necessarily believe it, but there's that part as well. Some agencies can turn on the microphone and relay the audio of most phones, even when you turn them off. Assuming you cannot remove the battery. This is why the president's phone as well as some other secure devices are supposed to have the microphones removed, and then have one plugged in when it's going to be in use. Previous presidents have begrudgingly accepted this practice. When retail employees go check in the back, they're actually just checking their social media for 5 minutes. If I tell you that we are out but you insist that I go check, I'll take a glance around and then stand around for a while, because hey, I know we're out. If I were to say that we're probably out, and offer to go look for you, then I'll definitely move boxes and check, and you'll maybe get lucky. Comes down to when we get shipments, how often something's requested, and how friendly you are about it. Flood insurance rates are a cycle to churn properties for big banks. We're in the very beginning of the bank accumulating property phase now. It goes like this. Flood insurance is cheap. Waterfront, flood zone, property values go up. Current stage of the cycle flood insurance rates start to creep up. They're currently going up 25% a year until they reach their true rate. Meaning, they'll keep getting risen until the banks get what they want. Starting to see this. People sell their flood zone properties because they become unaffordable i.e. you have a rental property that's clearing $250 per month, then your flood insurance goes up $100 per month, and it's going up next year, and the year after that. People will start selling, this hurts property values. This is where the banks clean up. 
property prices drop so low that people can't afford to sell, so they have to short sell or sell for a loss. If they can sell at all, otherwise the bank forecloses. The bottom falls out of the market and prices plummet because insurance rates are too high. The banks accumulate thousands and thousands of these undervalued properties. Now, the banks have to sell these things. If only there was a way to sell these properties. Oh yeah, let's reduce flood insurance rates and give the market a boost. This is where the cycle repeats. A couple things to note, the big giant million dollar homes aren't really affected by this. The owners are usually wealthy enough to afford the flood insurance rates, or own the house outright and don't need to carry insurance. The banks and the government are basically the same entity in this circumstance. A lot of houses in flood zones are huge neighborhoods that just happen to be low-lying, and can be miles away from waterfront. So, poor neighborhoods get hit the hardest by this. There's a cabal of very wealthy and influential psychopaths who control a good chunk of world politics, new members are introduced to, or encouraged by their own peers to partake in, pedophilia. They end up doing that not just because they may be bored with their lives or enjoy hurting children but also because this team building exercise in the guise of underage sex parties allows their friends to get compromising material on them. It is an initiation ritual aimed at building trust between everybody involved. If, almost, every member of the cabal has dirt on everybody else, then they surely won't rat each other out. This might also explain why Epstein got disposed of despite having been placed under police custody. Most conspiracy theories, especially the crazier ones, are meant to discredit the real ones. I've heard that the military encourages UFO conspiracies surrounding Area 51, because it's a testing site for experimental aircraft, and they'd prefer the rumors that spread around Area 51 to be complete lunacy about aliens rather than credible sightings of top-secret experimental stealth bombers or whatever. But I've only really heard this as rumors, never really seen any hard proof. The only reason why we are still in the Middle East is to harden our military so that if we go to war with another nation our troops have battle experience. I think this is what Russia is doing with Ukraine now too. Not to forget money. As the biggest weapons exporter in the world, we create a ton of weapons and war is very good business for arms dealers. Luckily for them, they sell to our military and have a lot of control over our government. Also having a military presence in a place with lots of oil means you can try to stabilize prices and create stronger relationships with the people who control the oil. The longer we're in war, especially ones with no end in sight and not many soldier casualties, a handful of people make a lot more money. Back in 2012 I flew back to the US via LaGuardia. As we started our decent, my husband, then my boyfriend, told me to look out the window. Loud as all all hell all I could say was holly hell there's a drone next to us. Woman in front of us whipped her head to the side and gasped in horror. As soon as she saw it, it went sideways and flew under and away. She got all in a panic and asked a flight attendant who assured us that we probably mistook something else for a drone. This thing was huge. 10 to 15 feet long? I've never seen one before and didn't know they were that big. Guys, the lady kept pestering the flight's attendant who had to then come back after speaking to pilot to refute what we saw. She kept saying that the military does not fly their drones this close to commercial flights. No one believed us. I'm from the good old USSR so I just got mad paranoid and kept my mouth shut. My husband would tell this story often. Friends sent articles confirming the pilot's take on things. And then around the reality winter time whistleblower releases, 2018, I ran across an article where the DOD admitted to have been doing this for ages while denying it to the public. At one point I felt like I imagined the whole thing. I mean, it was so surreal to see this drone feet away from our plane. It really shook me when it happened. I had nightmares for a while. That Disney owns an adult film industry, they just don't affiliate their names with it. I've told this to many people and look at me in horror like I just killed their child. I don't have a sinus source on this. This came up in a finance class years ago, and looking at it from a business perspective is not something to be amazed of. We're running out of antibiotics bacteria are developing resistances faster than we can produce new ones. At the current rate, we'll run out within the next 50 years. We've already exhausted the first ones we developed, like early types of penicillin. It's not all bad, though. If we rotate what we have, and invest in developing more, we can prolong the deadline indefinitely. Regardless, when your doctor tells you to take your antibiotics for the full prescribed duration, and to dispose of them safely at a pharmacy, you should listen. Source, Biologist. 
The bachelor course on pathogenic bacteria covered this. Social media, especially Snapchat and Instagram, exist in part to make us more comfortable with events in our lives being publicly known, which in turn makes us okay with losing privacy from government surveillance. I'm not saying that was the original intent of those apps. I'm saying that in their current form they tacitly encourage people to be comfortable with being watched and having their lives recorded. The government basically encourages this because it suits them. We'll go extinct before we can ever colonize other planets. In one of Vonnegut's books, pretty sure it was Hocus Pocus, he posits that the true point of humanity's existence is to create a strain of bacteria robust enough to survive being jettisoned into space. And survive long enough to make it to a habitable planet and begin life again. Democracy is dead. Americans talk about their right to bear arms, and that's cool and all but if you need to overthrow a government by force you are not going to take down the US Army just by rallying a few thousand sympathetic freedom fighters. And you'd better believe that you're always the terrorist in this situation, because the media will lie and smear to protect the government and corporate interests. A lot of first world countries have an intentionally broken voting system, first past the post, which keeps the two largest parties in power. This means that if people vote for the best party for the job, their vote goes to waste, so they often vote for a much worse party that aligns with them on more issues than the other choice. This in turn further entrenches the two-party system. Two parties means fewer people to bribe when you need policies passed or blocked. There is an element of voting with your wallet here, in the sense that the more you line the pockets of politicians, the more your vote on an issue counts. And it's only the ultra-rich and large corporations that have this kind of money in the first place. The policies these companies lobby for inevitably serve to reduce their social and environmental responsibility and contribute to the still expanding income inequality in America and the UK and many other countries. Unelected corporations are effectively setting your laws and that is why they suck so much, and that is why every president or prime minister seems to do next to nothing for actual progress regardless of which of the two parties they belong to. But sure, you have a vote which you can use to elect one of two corporatist puppets, and you have a gun which you can use to rise up, except you won't and if you tried you'd be killed on the spot. That's not democracy, that's democracy theatre. In the UK, we tried to change the voting system to one that would allow people to vote for their favourite party first and then rank other parties by order of preference, but it got shot down after a vote was called and the majority voted no. It seemed like all it took to convince most people to vote no, was for the media to say, don't do it, it will just end up voting the Lib Dems in. This also illustrates a problem with democracy even when we have it, people make uninformed decisions without knowing that they are missing vital information, and the media can manipulate this incredibly easily. Most conspiracy theories are planted by the government to cover the real conspiracies. The term conspiracy theorist was coined to make people that question things they shouldn't know about sound crazy. That way all the twisted stuff the government does, flies under the radar. Some of the most powerful people in the world being part of a child sex trafficking ring. The Jeffrey Epstein case proved it's absolutely true. Here's the big one. Remember that Sunspot Observatory they closed for a week? There was no news, no leaks, for a week. That was September last year. They finally said a janitor had been using the observatory's internet for kitty porn, but never charged him. That means he flipped on his master. It was almost directly south of the Kitty Pimp King's New Mexico ranch by a hundred miles or so. A couple months later, articles started getting published in a Miami paper about him that led to him being jailed. Here's my theory, the janitor was on the child sex slave master's payroll, using the observatory's fat internet pipeline to suck up all the video feeds from politicians having sex with his 16-year-olds, and younger, of every sex while high, and storing it as blackmail. The feds figured it out, and grabbed the vault. Separate a blackmailer from his comb per mod and he's powerless. That King Arthur's legend was a technological discovery. The sword from the stone was the discovery of natural iron, instead of the bog iron previously used for weapons. The Lady of the Lake was the discovery of quenching, which makes metal stronger. So by the Lady of the Lake helping them pull the sword from the stone, smelt iron weapons, and quench them, they allowed Arthur and his army, this superior weapons, to conquer England and become king. Disney named the movie Frozen, so when you Google Walt Disney and Frozen you don't get results about the old man's head. There's a similar theory with British politics at the moment, of politicians supposedly trying to hide things in search results. Like Boris Johnson painting miniature buses as a hobby, 
in an attempt to make that come up in Google results instead of the big red bus of lies he's associated with. He was calling himself a model of restraint, at the same time as a scandal involving the model. He was talking nonsense about a bridge from Scotland to Ireland. He was previously involved in a failed project in London called the Garden Bridge that wasted tons of money. The fact that hot dogs come in packs of 10 but buns come in packs of 8. First, you have to buy more hot dogs. Then, more buns. It's a never-ending cycle perpetuated by the hot dog slash bun industry. Lack of pockets in women's pants in the purse making industry. I always assumed it went something like this, women wanted to wear pants instead of dresses. The patriarchy finally, grudgingly, allowed it. The patriarchy paid off the fashion industry to make pockets in women's pants smaller and smaller until they literally no longer exist. Women find this frustrating. The fashion industry now adds pockets to dresses and skirts. Women, thrilled to have pockets again, want to wear dresses and skirts. The patriarchy's long con. Proof, tell a woman you like her dress, 9 out of 10 times the response will be, thanks. It has pockets. Remember when they had kids fingerprinted and photographed in case they were kidnapped? That was an easy way for the government to start a database of citizens while being publicly accepted. Even Disney parks use fingerprint scans to get in with multi-day passes. Universal Studios and Six Flags use fingerprints too, and it's kinda creepy. Not to forget all of our biometric security, aka databases with detailed fingerprint and facial scans of everyone who has a smartphone. That the whole new Coke fiasco was planned by Coke to fail. Coke was losing market share to Pepsi in the 80s and the cost of sugar cane was getting high, so Coke decided to take the short-term hit of introducing new Coke to replace the original Coke and have it fail. People would beg to have classic Coke back, and the company would oblige and see a huge spike in sales. This also helped them get over the ongoing PR issue all soda companies were having with the recent switch to high fructose corn syrup. People were so happy to have old Coke back it helped ensure their market dominance. The whole thing was a take a short term loss for long term gain approach, and it worked. Mattress companies are mostly money launderers. And I know for a fact that loads of small diners are for money laundering. You know that diner that you always drive by, but have never stopped that happens to be in a strip mall or an extremely small building? That one. Also, car washes. The Susan G. Komen Foundation CEO is the last person who wants a cure for cancer, lest the money and influence they gain is rendered obsolete. That's why they put far more money and effort into BS awareness campaigns, pimp out pink ribbons on anything no matter how toxic. And even sue other charities for using the phrase for the cure, leaving less money for research and treatment. When Microsoft revealed the Xbox One, one of the feature was that you wouldn't be able to play with the used game on the console, you either had to buy a brand new game or an activation code for the used game. I'm convinced that it was a marketing attempt to then come out as the good guys that listened to their customers and that they decided to roll back the feature. They just didn't plan for Sony to react as fast as they did, thus appearing as an out of touch company. When you think about it no competent company could have thought that it was a good idea, especially when Nintendo tried the same thing a few years prior with the 3DS and got crap for it by pretty much everyone. I have not yet been convinced that you need to make steel beams melt to make them go all boiled spaghetti noodle. It's like nobody ever watches any how to videos on metal smithing. But I do think it's very possible that the government knew that those terrorists were planning something like 9-11 and failed to stop it because it wanted an excuse to go to war. The US government purposefully increased attention to the Toyota Prius recall because Toyota was beating GM in sales after the bailout and wanted to increase the return on bailout. If you remember. The Toyota Prius had a brake malfunction several years ago, 2013 I think, that required a recall and actually did cause some accidents. I am not disputing Toyota's actual mechanical issues. I am saying that automobile recalls happen pretty frequently and this was pretty straightforward logistically. However, this damn recall was all over everything. New outlets ran stories about it for weeks, C-SPAN had discussions regarding Toyota's liability, etc. What also happened around that time? Just the government bailing out GM and Chrysler several years before with a promise of repayment. Well, looking at when Toyota, and especially the Prius, started to surpass GM in automobile sales it was awfully convenient for them to have problems. Those problems, coupled with constant publicity, actually hurt Toyota for a while there. I believe this was a conspiracy to hurt a foreign company because now the government had an invested interest in the success of GM. 
Shampoo is made to clean hair short term, but is not actually good for your hair long term so you have to keep using it and buying more. Electronics are made to break. Oil companies suppress innovative clean power technology. As for electronics are made to break, that's not even a theory, it's an actual thing, engineers etc call it planned obsolescence. It's not just for electronics but just about any and every mechanical design. Cars are famous for it, which is why older models last longer. Electronics, certainly, there is a light bulb in California that has been on since 1901, so yes, everything that is made today is made to break because that means you have to consume more. It also adds to the tremendous waste and pollution of the world. If there's one thing we could change that could improve the world it should be the policy to make and build stuff that lasts for as long as possible. We're a zoo planet. Like, the planet is a zoo and school trips from other planets zoom over here in their rocket ships to observe and then write papers about our stupid selves? When I was a kid, I always imagined that planet Earth was nothing more than a fish tank, sitting on a rickety table in some alien stoner's living room. Drunk friend bangs table, hurricane. Stoner forgets to take care of fish for a few months, drought and famines. I'm still secretly waiting for Stoner to find a girlfriend who either insists on cleaning up and taking care of the tank, or getting rid of it because it's beyond help. So many people mentioned it before, but Epstein. It was too convenient. Everybody laughed off the possibility of a big human trafficking ring run by the elite when Assange dropped the emails, right? Couple years later, Epstein gets arrested, has evidence of it, then dies? What kind of nonsense is that? One of my co-workers truly believes that Epstein isn't even dead, just a fake death so that some government branch could take him in for intensive questioning without any undue attention. I'm not really a conspiracy theory guy, but the question is often asked who benefits. The person who gained the most out of 9-11 was George Bush. He went from a joke of a president who most people considered stole the election, to being taken seriously because, he is our president. Even my father, who hated the guy, got pissed off with me and corrected me when I referred to him as President Shrub a few months after the attack. I don't know if it's a conspiracy theory or not. I imagine it qualifies. I'm convinced that JFK was accidentally killed by CIA friendly fire. Not premeditated or anything, just an oops, as a CIA agent on a different car stumbled while drawing his weapon. To me, it covers all the bases. Weird angle of the shot. The odd behavior of the CIA afterwards, even the length of time the records are sealed until, they want to ensure anyone who could possibly be held responsible, especially the accidental shooter, has died. The baggy pants urban look of the 90s was invented by fat, out of shape police officers who could not catch offenders unless they tripped over their pants. True story, cop friend worked mall security on the side. Guy in baggy pants grabs a pair $20 jeans and takes off. Friend pursues. He manages to grab the guy by the baggy pants and the dude runs right out of them. Pantless thief dashes off into the night with his stolen $20 jeans, leaving my friend holding a $100 designer pair. That we never sell cures to diseases and illnesses simply because it isn't profitable. It's so much more profitable to just endlessly sell treatments to the diseases and ask for money for research and development for cures that never come out to the public. The Democrats and Republicans are the same party. They split in half and take opposing sides on all issues, but intentionally just pass things to keep themselves in office and stuff that lobbies pay them to pass. All of democracy is an illusion. It keeps people in perpetual hope that things will get better when in fact it's the drip-drip effect of achieving the agenda of a select elite. The McCanns killed their daughter Madeline, then claimed she was abducted. I believe she was drugged the night before and died accidentally and they hid her body before claiming she had gone missing. Their friends were involved in the cover-up. I'm not really sold on it, however, there is the conspiracy that the Vegas shooting was a Mexican cartel job, and was covered up. Here's why. There is evidence in the official FBI report regarding the shooting that the shooter was selling weapons illegally to criminal elements, and may have been working with the FBI as a mole. In the hotel room, there were something like 30 plus guns displayed around it, even though the shooter only used one gun for the shooting. And I do mean displayed. They were placed on couches, in the bedroom, in the bathroom, everywhere. Apparently the shooter had an escape plan set up, and even had security cameras set up outside his hotel room, but no one was allowed access to see it during or after the investigation. This was never truly confirmed though. The one witness to the shooter, a security guard for the hotel who had something like 200 rounds shot at him, 
immediately went to Mexico on vacation after the shooting, before coming back and going to TV shows. Some people say it wasn't the same person, but I find that to be untrue. Almost all of the shooter's personal files and computers had been wiped and others had disappeared before the FBI got to his house, meaning he or someone else deleted his files and he almost any evidence as to why he did it. This pretty much goes against the MO of every modern mass shooter. Now, I'm not sold that this is the truth, but it does make a little more sense than a millionaire went nuts and shot up a country concert. UFOs are real and we are currently in the middle of UFO disclosure. The US government closed its UFO investigation program Project Blue Book in 1969 saying that UFOs don't exist and they don't study them. This was the official policy of the US government for 50 years up until two years ago when the Pentagon revealed the existence of a secretive program that studies UFOs and released footage of UFOs captured by Navy fighter jets. Since then there has been a steady flow of serious mainstream media coverage regarding UFOs. Based on the trajectory of the news stories, it seems like there's going to be even more information coming out over the coming years. The reason conspiracy theorists sometimes find legitimate documentation of government research into supernatural and paranormal claims, especially documentation which seems to suggest some actual success, is because the US government deliberately produced false reports of successes to fool Russian spies. Both the US and Soviet government were known to organize research projects into supernatural claims in hopes of it leading to some new kind of strategy or weapon. Pretty much all the research proved fruitless and sometimes even fraudulent on the part of the civilian research staff. For instance, there is legitimate documentation that the CIA was funding research into psychics who were capable of remote viewing, which is the ability to see things within being there. Very useful for spying. According to the reports the research was even somewhat successful. However, the truth is that whenever a paranormal research project seemed to be failing without any hope of success the CIA would step in and defund it and shut it down, but make the research staff produce reports of success without exact explanations for how they achieved it. Then make sure those files were stored somewhere a spy might stumble upon them. They knew the Soviets would see some mention of success in an area they had failed at themselves, or hadn't even considered and would waste tons of valuable resources trying to recreate the success they believed the US had achieved. While the US government could afford to waste money, the Soviets could not. However, so many false reports were created to misinform the Soviets and weed out Russian spies that they didn't even know where they had stashed them all. Flash forward to today and every so often a conspiracy theorist stumbles upon one of these old reports, or speaks to someone who has. North Korea is a social experiment to figure out how humankind operates in total isolation. Nobody knows 100% for sure how North Korea is actually run. It's believed that it's actually just a military junta, and the Kim family are just a legitimate front to keep people rallied round a common cause. And so North Korea can be marketed to the world as something other than the military dictatorship it actually is. The Kim family live in obscene luxury to keep them sweet, and they are more or less held to ransom. Hitler didn't kill himself and fled to South America. There are some good evidence to believe this. But it's also very contradictory and commercial this theory. As Argentinian, I was told two times there was after World War II a very important resident in this hotel, that lived hiding and the few times we saw him he looked like Hitler. Once in Hotel Eden, in La Falda, Cordoba, also known for having paranormal activity. And situated in a neighborhood known by German-styled houses. It was a very rich, very powerful and very mysterious place in 1940s and 1950s. Now it's all about selling history and not knowing what is truth and what is exaggeration. Then in Bariloche there are some places that tells you that Hitler was hiding there. What should be known, is that Argentina in 1930s and 1940s was Nazi. During the war served both sides and only declared war to Germany in 1945. So it could be real that all Nazis families migrated to Argentina just to not be killed. Marilyn Monroe was murdered by the US government. She frequently attempted suicide and then called someone via her landline next to her bed to come save her. When she died, no traces of it were found within her stomach and her colon had been extremely cleaned. A theory is that she was murdered via enema poisoning. I haven't brushed up on it or researched in a long time so I am probably remembering facts incorrectly. Search it up on YouTube it's quite interesting. Most of the most successful people in the world score above average on psycho or sociopathy checklists, and are also super sleepers, meaning they have a rare gene that allows them to need a lot less sleep than the rest of us, usually 6 or less hours. 
It seems to be true of both business and politics, as both Obama and Trump fit the bill. Trump being the more noticeable one of course, due to being a cartoonishly evil billionaire, and tweeting at all hours. While that often leads to people with at least somewhat dubious morals gaining more power, it can also be a good thing, at least in politics, due to leaders needing to be able to make difficult decisions without their emotions clouding their minds. For example, Winston Churchill scores pretty highly on the sociopathy checklist as well. Some televangelists may not be entirely sincere in their beliefs. I used to work as a ranch hand in Texas, on a huge ranch owned by a televangelist. He was a very cold, disassociated old man. The only thing he cared for were his trophy kills, which were mounted throughout the estate. I hated it when he came by to visit, which was not even very often. A lot of the low-rent tent revivalists use techniques from stage magicians and con artists. But even the big TV evangelists have spies in the audience and lobby with concealed radio headsets. They talk to people, find out why they're there, and suddenly the prophet knows all this personal information about them, straight from God. 60 Minutes did an expose decades ago, I remember Peter Popoff was one of the charlatans that got exposed. He retired to a life of quiet contemplation until another generation of victims came of age, and resumed his con game. There was a husband and wife team of evangelists who lost everything in their modest home following a very suspicious fire, the couple begged their church for donations to buy clothes and toiletries. 60 Minutes then showed an aerial view of a monstrous mansion in a Dallas suburb the couple secretly owned through a shell company. I love watching these a-holes burn. iHeartRadio coordinates commercials breaks to all take place simultaneously so you're forced to listen to ads even if you change the station. They're practically a monopoly in my area and I notice it happens to me all the time. Someone replied, radio stations, even competitors, do this on purpose. No hidden conspiracy needed. If your main competitor airs spots, commercials, at, 15, 30, and, 45, it's in your interest to do the same. That way your listeners can switch to music on another station during your spot break and potentially stay there. It's not like radio is secret. You can and should monitor competition and plan accordingly. To your original point, iHeart is just a clear channel, and they tend to have a general template that all their stations follow. So one station will have its breaks at or around the same time as another. This is all based on a lot of market research and has generally been tested and refined over time to the point of ensuring rating success. Other stations follow suit. The negative side effect is the homogenization of radio. They all sound alike because it works but it only works in a everything is mediocre kind of way. If someone does break from the pack and create a successful innovation, other stations follow and the homogenization continues. For a further example, notice that local TV news shows tend to cover weather, sports, local news, etc. All at or around the same basic time. Source, I programmed radio stations for years. Worked for Clear Channel. Played the same classic rock songs in a different order day after day, week after week. I've been working as an American healthcare consultant for two years now, and I genuinely think that insurance companies are purposely denying claims so that they can leverage dollar for their beneficiaries' medical records. For example, one of my clients, a huge and important hospital system, had to deal with hundreds of thousands of dollars of medical claim denials because Humana suddenly decided it didn't believe any of those hospital stays were legitimate. They basically told my client to either fax hundreds of medical records or accept the zero pays. It's really suspicious and unfortunate. But when they have the money, what can you do? That Apple started the AirPods meme, and right before Christmas they would give out $150 gift cards. I fully believe companies are using memes as a marketing technique. All it needs is one big post on a couple subs here and it's all over the internet hitting their target audience in hours days. Disney made Zootopia partly to replace the Song of the South characters from Splash Mountain. Splash Mountain is really the only thing that still exists in the public eye from Song of the South, along with the song zippity doo since Disney wants to pretend that movie doesn't exist. So they created a movie featuring Fox and Rabbit characters that could replace Bear Fox and Bear Rabbit, and re-theme the entire ride to be Zootopia themed, while leaving some things, like the name, and the songs featured in the ride, from Song of the South. There's also the Disney loves re-theming things to their IP now, getting rid of Maelstrom and bringing in a Frozen themed ride, so it would make sense for them to re-theme a ride to a successful recent movie then keep a ride based off an old, mildly racist movie they're trying to forget. The really stupid conspiracy theories, vaccines causing autism, flat earth, lizard people, 
etc., are intentionally spread by propaganda groups and troll farms. They don't care what stupid stuff you believe, but they are very interested to know that you're a gullible mark who will believe anything with no evidence, and won't do research with authorities on the matter to find the truth. If you want to spread misinformation, look for the people who do it as a hobby. It could also be divide and conquer. They're doing a good job of dividing us so far. While we're busy bickering and being isolationists, China and Russia are consolidating their power around the world. The 10-year challenge all over social media is actually a way to record and gather more facial recognition data. The ice bucket challenge was definitely something similar. Pour water over my head so the cameras will recognize me in the rainstorm. You know, to spread awareness. Also, some of the fill in the blank with personal information Facebook memes look pretty suspect to me as well. They don't necessarily have to have Facebook or the government behind them, but I do wonder about anything that is you posting your pirate nickname that is based off of the last four digits of your social security number, your mother's maiden name, or your eye color. Why more people aren't skeptical about posting answers to common security questions in a public format is beyond me. The lines on the detergent caps are higher than they should be, so you use more detergent for each load of laundry. It's so easy for them to get away with it. Toothpaste is the same. It is definitely advertised with great big globs of toothpaste on the brush, far more than is needed or recommended. Also hand and dish soap being dispensed is generally at a greater amount than needed to lather. I have a theory that Tinder gives fake, you got a new match notifications, so people get excited and open Tinder, which leads them to swipe more. This is absolutely the case with Plenty of Fish. UK dating app, not sure if it's worldwide like Tinder, quite easy to see the patterns etc and the repeated timings are almost down to within the minute. Also does get loads of matches within the first few days of starting an account, and then again after a few weeks to try and get you interested again. Not a conspiracy theory, but I have my moments of Truman Show delusions. I think this has become a wide enough phenomenon that psychologists have even coined a term for it. I've had stuff happen to myself before that made me really question if my life was a scripted show or a virtual reality experience. I consider myself pretty observant, and this one particular time it was as though all the extras were shocked that I was at a specific place. It is very hard to explain but it was like stranger after stranger had looks on their faces when they made eye contact with me like, oh no, what is he doing here? As though they were bad actors incapable of hiding their surprise. It really freaked me out and I'm not prone to episodes of paranoia or delusions of grandeur, and I don't experiment with drugs. I'm just a regular Joe type guy who sometimes notices something is wrong or different with a given situation. I remember even checking myself in the mirror afterwards to make sure I didn't have something weird on my face, there was nothing, no explanation for what I experienced. The news report about beards containing more bacteria than a dog that just licked his own a-hole. Beards are messing with facial recognition software. The man wants beards to not be trendy anymore. If we started wearing zebra makeup to mess with facial recognition software there would be a campaign to dehumanize people wearing zebra makeup. Some celebrities fake their deaths to retire from public eyes. Jim Morrison for example. He was burned out with his career with The Doors, starting to reinvent himself as Mr. Mojo Ryzen. His actual death could be seen as slightly shady, he was a drinker and whilst was known to dabble with hallucinogenics, he was never a taker of heroin and looked down on his peers and lovers for taking it. Pamela also died pretty quickly after he allegedly passed. That the dust the Kleenex tissues have, makes you sneeze more, therefore using more tissues. This is well known for nasal decongestants like Benzedrex. I think it's the same for chapsticks too. They cause his lips to become more dry a couple hours after usage. I base this on the fact that my lips are more dry 5 hours after using chapstick than 2 days after using it. I've always speculated that a lot of priceless artwork and historical documents are actually replicas or copies. Obviously a painting by a world famous artist using a very specific technique would be very hard to fake, and I don't think that every art scholar in the world is paid off in some grand conspiracy. Rather. I just think that either the national treasures never left their vaults or that some national treasures actually were lost to history but they were copied. Banks and landowners conspire to manipulate urban land prices. Turn an area into a ghetto by marking it as a high-risk loan proposition, denying loans in the area. Property values plummet on a downtown area because no one can sell, because no one can get a loan. Once things are down enough, you can buy up prime location land at pennies on the dollar, 
then redevelop it into being worth the real market value of such a central location, plus what you invested in the actual development. Michael Jordan's father was murdered in retribution for Jordan not paying off massive gambling debt. Jordan didn't retire and then come back, he was suspended for gambling. In the mid-90s, Michael Jordan was an industry. The truth about his gambling habits may have cost a lot of people a lot of money, so the cover story was presented. I believe in the mattress store conspiracy, so the conspiracy is that mattress stores are for money laundering. I went onto Google Maps and typed in mattress stores near me. There were four mattress stores in the same shopping center. There was a road that had five mattress stores less than a mile apart. So I definitely believe in it. All my devices listen to me. The other day I was arguing with my dad about some chicken I thought had gone off, it was frozen for about a month so we weren't too sure, but my dad was insistent that it was still edible. Dad decided to ask Google, and lo and behold the related searches even from the first letter were, is chicken edible after being frozen for a month and how long can you freeze chicken before it goes off? Also, my mom and I use this tactic where if we need to ring up a company about something and it puts us in a queue, we swear at it. It then puts you on a priority list and you don't have to wait as long. Kinda sketchy on the company's behalf. I believe there is a ridiculous amount of pedophilia among the upper echelons of society. Whether it is uncovered in the Catholic Church, British Parliament, Hollywood, Washington DC, Saudi Arabia, the mainstream media doesn't seem interested in shining a light on the networks and procurers who allow this practice to thrive. Remember when Sasha Baron Cohen inadvertently uncovered an underage service in Las Vegas? Imagine the demand required for this heinous practice to exist. Offered by the concierge no less. PETA was formed by meat companies to make animal rights activists look like idiots. The majority of animal rights activists don't like PETA. PETA wastes a lot of their own time calling out video games and cartoons. They operate shelters that have kill rates over 90%. Many of the animals they kill are perfectly healthy, happy, and adoptable. They also just make people who actually care about animal rights look stupid as hell with their parody games. No real animal welfare advocate thinks like, Pokemon is a problem. The USA will never add colleges to public funding like they did with high schools because then the enlistment rate for the military would plummet. Source, everyone I know who joined the service just to help pay for school. In addition to this the federal government makes a ton of money off of student loans. Source, just took out 70k with 6 plus percent interest rate that will accumulate for a minimum of 4 years before I even start to pay them off. Multiply this by every student that doesn't default on their loans and that is a lot of money. Most anti-smoking slash vaping ads, including those truth ads are funded by tobacco companies, that part isn't conspiracy it's just a fact. Sometime in the 80s the industry was sued and part of the settlement included them funding anti-smoking ads. It may technically be opinion, but I don't think many are gonna disagree that most of those ads are also just plain annoying as hell. I think that's on purpose, so you'll ignore them, hell I personally have almost wanted to smoke just to spite the ads. I honestly think a lot of people from the 1% richest people in the world hold the human sex trafficking industry. The reason I think this is because no country is showing awareness to this issue like it should be. I think they hold so many positions of power and media outlets with the checkbook that they can get away with it without people putting up too much of a fuss. All the UFO sightings throughout history are just humans from the future on a time traveling safari meant to observe how we were in the past. They are supposed to keep out of sight. But thanks to human or mechanical errors there have been hiccups with their cloaking which have resulted in being seen. That's why there have always been so many reports of them throughout history, but there has never been an attack. It's just us. Also the reason why we don't see as many examples of UFOs now, even through pretty much everyone has a camera, is because people are not that interested in this time period, since we already document aspects of human life all the time. All this complaining about millennials being lazy and entitled is designed to push more young people to prove they aren't, by adopting unhealthy work habits, such as working overtime without complaint, not taking vacation time, etc. I think this became especially necessary after millennials got more burned out and resentful as unpaid internships became a huge thing. It seems like that helped more people see the light on being exploited and manipulated by workplaces. More and more people are being screwed over by their employers while being told that they should basically be grateful that people are willing to pay them. Employers aren't cutting you a paycheck because they care about you. You fulfill their needs. They aren't your family, 
and if it's a 40 hour work week, you don't owe them a minute more than 40 hours, and that's not laziness, that's refusing to be taken advantage of. Avril Lavigne being dead and substituted by her doppelganger Melissa Vandella. This meme isn't dead yet. It makes sense considering Melissa was allegedly hired as Avril's publicity double. The conspiracy focuses on whether Melissa assumed Avril's identity or not, and if Avril committed suicide. I think a reason we haven't been visited by extraterrestrials is because they don't possess the same motivations as us. We as humans want to explore, we want to expand and grow. Aliens from other planets may have no reason to do that. They might be totally cool with being fully sentient but have no wish to map out their planet, or build. They could be as intelligent as us, or even more so, but just not have that drive to seek out other life like we do. Maybe they even know we're just here with their advanced technology and just don't care. I believe that human civilization may have gotten as advanced as we are now in the distant past. First, anatomically modern humans have been around for like 300,000 years. Civilization, from the earliest settlement we know of to today is maybe 20,000 years old. In short, there's absolutely plenty of time to go from Sumerians to Americans nearly 10 times over in the time span between the first modern humans and Sumerians. And given that there's nothing unusual about the humans who build Sumer. Second, there are lots of legends about human civilization being destroyed by angry gods, usually because of humans behaving badly. The Greeks had a story like that, the Bible, the Hopi, the Zarathustrians, just about any place where there's a record, you can find history of and often prophecies of a catastrophe that ends civilization and more often than not, caused by human hubris. Third, there are all kinds of anomalies in history. Egypt has model airplanes, Indian scripture has vimeenas that sound a lot like airplanes or spacecraft. There's the Pyrace map that shows Antarctica before it had been discovered, and it's accurate. These things don't make sense unless you have people understanding technology near our own level before us. All money created cannot be paid back because of interest. Therefore the monetary system is a pyramid scheme and trying to survive is like playing musical chairs. Oil and car companies used fear-mongering and assassins to stop electric or innovative cars from development in the 20th century. There was this guy who designed a car with an engine in the front and headlights which turned as the front wheels turned and he was assassinated. Others have designed cars powered by water or magnets were also killed. That there are missing pages is the history of mankind. I believe civilization is far older than Mesopotamia, 3500 BC, but has been knocked back into the Stone Age in the Younger Dryas climate catastrophe 12,600 years ago, where a meteorite hit the giant ice cap from the last ice age which reached parts of the United States. This killed off most of the giant mammals like saber-toothed tigers, giant sloths, most of the mammoths. The past 10 years a lot of evidence has been uncovered to support this, like Gablakita Pay in Turkey being from 10,000 BC and an impact crater in Greenland from 12,000 years ago with a diameter of 34 kilometers. We've also found unexplainable genetic links between humans from the Amazon and aboriginals from Australia, and only in the Amazon. This is important because this link is not found in North America and thus excluding migration of these genetic strains through the Beringer Strait. This could mean that our estimates of the first humans reaching the Americas, a little over 10.000 years ago, could be way off as ancient humans might have been able to cross the oceans. How else could people have reached places like Easter Island, where the closest mainland is 3.500 kilometers away? I do, however, not think this is a deliberate conspiracy but more a case or sticking with what we've accepted. Graham Hancock has some nice books and lectures, and Jimmy from the YouTube channel Bright Insight talks a lot about these theories. American prisons generate too much money for us to ever take the rehabilitation part of the process seriously. Therefore we will always have prisons. We have three in my town. The population of this town is about 40,000 and the prisons employ about 600 people. Add in the halfway houses and county jail you are looking at close to 1,000 people that have good paying government jobs. Not to mention all the police officers, judges, probation officers and criminal lawyers. If we took criminal justice reform seriously, a lot of people would be put off a job and our state funding would go way down. Some conspiracy theories, think Flat Earth or Antivax, were deliberately created to ease the public into accepting internet censorship. For example, if YouTube censors out pro anti-vax videos, the public is happy to accept that kind of censorship because it's a matter of public health and safety, and negatively impacts children. 
But where do you draw the line? If we set a precedent that it's okay to censor one side of an argument, even if it's a ridiculous argument, there's really no limit to what gets censored in the future. It seems like the anti-vax movement has gained so much traction recently. It's on the news so frequently and talked about everywhere. Yet I've never actually encountered an anti-vaxxer in reality, nor do I know anyone that knows an anti-vaxxer. Seems like a made-up problem, or an exaggerated problem, so that the public can become outraged, demand that this group be silenced and welcome internet censorship. People are farmed. Not physically but economically. Capitalism works by adjusting prices to the point just below where it becomes too expensive. Products except in the most competitive areas are priced not at what they cost to produce but at what you, the idiot consumer, are willing to pay for it. Therefore we are all kept in a state of relative poorness. This ensures those at the top maintain control. Consider this as proof. If we stopped buying things for the sake of it, what would happen to pricing and what would happen to those mega corporations who are farming us? Skincare is a hoax to scam users of their money. It's designed to give skin temporary qualities that make it desirable, softness, smoothness, cleanliness, etc., but that's all it is. Temporary. Once the effect goes away, it leaves the skin in a slightly worsened state, and there begins a cycle of dependency. Either a dependency of the same brand or one similar, or one that claims to be better, at a more premium price. My evidence is that my girlfriend and sister use such products. It's all lined up on the bathroom counter. Bottles and bottles of toners, cleansers, masks, scrubs. You name it. But despite using all these products their skin is still not what they'd like it to be. Me on the other hand, washes my face with water and dries it with a rough towel. It's like I'm trying to sand my face off with the towel. And then I just put some moisturizer on because my skin gets uncomfortably dry without it. I think I messed myself over there because now I have a dependency on the moisturizer. Anyway, my skin is still way better than theirs, and I use way less products. Thanks for listening to Radio TTS Long Play. Hit the subscribe button and activate the notification bell for more long videos. Click the right box for the Reddit Conspiracy Playlist. Let us know in the comments if you made it through a 1 hour Reddit video without brain damages.